Hey, everybody. Great of you all to, to be here this, this early time. I'm excited to tell you a bit about the, the past and the future of Solana security, kind of like an inside look, my personal views into it. Um, and I kind of like want to ask the question, like, has Solana become more secure? Like, we at some points been hearing like Solana is like really hard to develop for, and that is like kind of like this eat glass mentality, which kind of like makes some insecurity, right? Um, and back in 2020, that was definitely true. But like right now, like how does it look like? And first, maybe a bit of who am I? Um, I'm Thomas. I'm the CEO and co-founder of, of Neodyme. We're like a security research company on Solana. And basically, our whole like, founding mission was like provide security on Solana. That was like the whole reason we even exist. Like, I, I myself come from like, maybe like a hardware security computer engineering background, um, so not so much crypto. But then three years ago, I basically like, entered this crypto security market. And um, yeah. Been, been really like digging it. Like the, the technical complexity is just like really amazing in this space, and it's really interesting the, the challenges you face. Um, so let's start with the dark ages, as I like to call them. Like back in 2020, like Mainnet just launched in like March of 2020, and Solana was like still trading at like one dollar per, per sol. So it's like the, the early times. Um, and me at the time, I was still like at university studying my, my computer science degree. And now nobody really like understands Solana. Like it's, it's really new, developers are starting to pick it up. Um, and then a friend of ours comes to us, like we have the CTF team, we're playing like cybersecurity competitions together. And a friend of ours from this team says, hey, there's this Solana thing, go look at it. Like that's interesting. And they have like a bug bounty. And like, maybe you find something. I found something already. Um, go look. And we were like, ah, it's crypto. I don't know, maybe. And people start looking a bit. And then we start finding things. And then motivated by that, we just start looking more and more and more. And in the end, um, we had like probably 100 different bugs in like the Solana blockchain itself. Like most of them weren't really that severe, but it was still like stuff we actually found. Like, me at the time, I was still like at university. Like I'm good at security, but still it was like kind of like interesting, just like doing that on your own without having a company behind you. Um, and then Solana starts picking up steam. Like we are in 2021 now, and the big event of this year, in the beginning, was like February. Inflation got enabled, and like with this beginning of inflation for us was like the real moment. Okay, now now it's gonna take off. Because now there's incentive to stake, you're going to have stake pools, you're going to have all of these protocols popping up. But still, nobody really knew how to write these contracts. There was a lot of code out there, and a lot of code was bad. Um, and then, since we have done so many like, work with the core protocol itself, we were like, really good at like, already understanding like, what is Solana, what does it do, how does the programming model look like. And then the Solana Foundation basically approached us, hey, please help us. Um, there are a lot of smart contracts. Do you want to take a look at them? And we were like, I mean, I don't know. We're still like in, in school or like we're students. We don't really have a company. Like it's kind of difficult. But then we just meant, okay, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. There's like this market. In this market, there's like no player. And like we already have market fit. Like we're good. We know what we're talking about. Let's fund the company. And that's like basically where Neodyme comes from. So, um, and then the market just like insanely exploded. In like August of 2021, I mean, salt spiked to like over $200. Um, and that was the time where you had like these huge protocols, which are just like rushing to market. Because there was like money to be had there if you were first to market, if you were the first exchange, if you were the first stake pool, whatever. And that led to like rushed code. And rushed code is always like a bit bad for security. So we started looking at these, these smart contracts and started finding like so many bugs in there. Um, just like calling a program via CPI and not checking the program itself. Like, I think this was like one of our favorite bugs. And these bugs, they were like really critical. You had like Alameda FTX pumping like money into these protocols, and there were like hundreds of millions, if not billions, in these protocols. And I just like been a student like a year ago. Now, and like five digits was like a lot of money, and like six digit sums. This was just like huge amounts of money. And now I have like a bug in a smart contract 
which, will, which I could steal a billion with. So that was like really insane time. And like we kept finding these bugs and like quickly fixing them. And like the whole ecosystem was like really grateful for us to like secure this kind of things. Um, yeah, and then there was also like the first breakpoint for us. And like during this first breakpoint, we already held like a talk, like thinking like an attacker, where we went like, okay, we have to like educate the community about how does security in Solana work? What are the big pitfalls? And there was also like the initial release of Anchor, which I think is right now like a solid um, stone in like the security ecosystem here. Um, and then we had 2022. And that for us was like maybe a bit of a, like, a depressing year, just because like there were like these two big hacks. There was like Wormhole and there was Mango. And um, yeah, both of them like a lot of funds were like at risk. And then was like FTX and it kind of like crashed. It's like, um, it, it didn't look that good for security, and I think that's where like a lot of this impression that like Solana is like insecure comes from. Um, but like all of these protocols by now, they have like done huge steps to improve like the security, and I think the ecosystem learned a lot from that. And now let's go to the present. By now, like I think just like a couple of years ago, Solana has like recovered to like where it was a year ago, just like pretty much breakpoint to breakpoint, um, and. Core, like the Solana core code, is much more solid now. Contracts, contracts are also much more solid. Like a lot of these contracts are now just using Anchor, which like prevents a lot of the, the, the basic bugs. Um, and it's, it's a great framework, but I still think there's like some room to improvement for them in the, in the future. So I also want to take a look at like the deployed contracts. Like how is the security ecosystem looking right now? And just like looking at the, at the ecosystem, we see there are 6,000 different contracts on Solana right now, all of which are just like deployed. This is like an increase of 30% over last year um, at Breakpoint. So we see that there are still like a lot of people developing new, new contracts. Like not all of them are maybe like used that much, um, but still all of them should be secure, right? Um, and about two thirds of all of the contracts right now are using the Anchor framework. And only like one third are using, um, yeah, some some custom framework or no framework at all. Um, if we just look at much used contracts, we see there are like 33, which are like really the big like arbitrage contracts. We have, have like over 10 million call, uh, 100 million calls this year alone. But if you look at like over 1 million contract calls this year, it's 250 contracts. So 250 out of these 6,000 are like important right now. And yeah, so the thing I like to hammer, which I think is like one of the big issues in the Solana ecosystem right now are like upgrade authorities. A lot of people, I mean, I'm sure the ones here know, but I'm sure the wider ecosystem doesn't really know about that. Contracts are upgradable. Many, many of the contracts just have like some upgrade authority which can like completely replace the implementation. And like, even if the contract itself is secure right now. If these upgrade authority is like lost or compromised or whatever, the contract might be upgraded to a malicious one. We've recently seen that with the Synthetify hack. Uh, there was like this DAO, um, which was just like inactive, and like hackers took over this DAO and did a contract upgrade, and like were able to steal like uh, some some six digit sum of money. Um, so I think that's like really important thing to like for the community to grow. We've seen some of the larger protocols like have really excellent solutions there, just like a multi-sig with like a bunch of trusted parties published. The parties are all verified. I think that's great, but I, just like as an ecosystem, we don't have like a good structure which just everyone can follow. Everyone is kind of like home rolling in their own thing. Some of them are great, some of them not so much. So I think this is like a large part um, where we want to work on. In 2023 alone. We had 22,000 contract upgrades. So like, if you consider we have 6,000 contracts and 22,000 upgrades, that's like, on average, each contract upgrades every three months. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no time for auditors even to look at all of this code. I'm sure a bunch of these contracts are just testing contracts, um, but still, the average is like a bit too high for, for my liking. And then there are bugs. Um, like we've seen a lot, a lot, lot less of these common, you are missing an owner check bug. These, these all basic ones. Because like, I mean, everyone's using Anchor nowadays. So like Anchor checks that for you. What we do see 
um, are like more like business logic bugs, which are like always hard to detect in like any kind of program. And then maybe more Solana specific, we see that you do have account checks, but like account checks in relation to each other are maybe not met. Like, is this a token account really the token account of the Mint uh, or like of the Vault? Like, I check it's a token account, but maybe not the, the relation of, of all accounts together. Um, so that's, that's one thing with the, and I've, I've been talking to developers a lot among this conference, just like learning, like what are the pain points of the developers? And like something I've been told is like rounding errors, are like really scary for developers right now, because that's something like unique to like this low fee blockchain. Like on Ethereum, if you have like high fees, rounding errors don't really matter. They're just not exploitable. The fees are like always going to be larger. But on Solana, like the fees are like so insanely low, and you can put so many instructions in a single transaction um, that rounding errors may become worth it. And now you have to really think about: I have a pool, and the user pays some money in, and then they pay some money out. Like, do I round down? Do I round up? So, like, I think that's something where we can like maybe create a bit more guidance um, and really have to think about what's going on there. Um, yeah, and we've also seen a bunch of bugs which aren't really smart contract bugs at all popping up. Like stuff which is more like RPC related. Like maybe you want to parse an event and look at the logs for that. Log parsing on Solana is currently a really hard problem. And I think we're going to see that more and more in the future. As like the smart contracts itself become more secure, focus is going to shift a bit more like away from the contracts and more like at the ecosystem around the contracts, like how you're going to use them, how do the web interfaces look, are there like social engineering attacks you could run against the users. All right, let's look towards a bright future. I mean, that's why we're all here today, to have like an excellent discussion about like um, what's, what's coming up. I'm excited for a bunch of the talks today um, because like, we are still a young ecosystem like, compared to like, a mature ecosystem like Ethereum, which has like, all of these, these tools. Um, Solana is only like, three years at mainnet, um, not even that. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to have to like, create more documentation. We have to create more tools. Um, right now, with like, the bear market, we've seen that a lot of the protocols just have more time to spend on security which is like really great. Like we see a lot of like the big protocols just really like taking a step back and analyzing like what do we want in our next version of a contract to be, to implement that, to audit that, and then to launch it. And this is like a really great place to be in and I hope we can keep that once the market starts pick, picking up again. Because I think this, this philosophy of like design first and then launch second is like really important for security, um, which is hard to keep with like a lot of market pressures from the outside. Um, and we also seen like use of like easy to use multisigs. Like squads recently, um, we audited, which had like uh, this easy to use multisig, which people can like, use for upgrade authorities and stuff. So I think there's like a lot of stuff happening there as well. We also seen like more validator clients. I mean, that's just like a hot, hot topic. I think of like this this whole breakpoint is like Firedancer recently launched on testnet with like partial implementations. And I think just like for a core network perspective, that's like amazing. Um, you would no longer have like the possibility even for like bugs in like Solana Labs implementation of the validator to corrupt state in a way that's not going to be noticed. So once that's live, I think just like from a, a core state machine security way, that's going to be amazing. Um, and then there's RPC security. I think that's also something a lot of the users don't really know about. Like, everything the user does is trusting one single RPC right now. Like, if the user wants to know how many tokens does he have, he looks at output of an RPC node. If the user wants to, like, transfer tokens, he sends the transaction to an RPC node. And then the RPC node tells him, this transfer has succeeded. And he's, like, basically completely reliant on that. And right now, there is no easy way, beside running your own validator, to, like, be 100% sure that what you're seeing is like really the truth. And I've seen a lot of like interesting work happening there. We're going to have a panel later today on RPC security. Um, and we've also like the Tiny Dancer folks, they've been doing some really great proposals like SIMD64, this Solana improvement document just was finalized, which has like a way to do transaction receipts. That's a way to like prove that a transaction was included on chain and it was successful. So I think these kinds of ways, which like an RPC node might just, here's the result, and here's the proof that this result is true. Um, that's going to be great. Just like, even though users might not necessarily know about that, um, 
this is just going to improve that before they even be our issues. And then we have runtime v2. That's like what I'm personally most excited about because like the, the typed smart contracts that are going to come with that are just going to be such a paradigm shift in smart contract development. And I think it's going to be make um, smart contract development a lot easier and also for us as auditors maybe um, easier to like understand and follow because types are always like a great way to like reduce bugs. That's something like I, I really love about Rust, just like all the, the type system that's great. And like doing that cross programs, it's going to be amazing. And we've also seen very, very many like miscellaneous fixes in Runtime V2. Like they, they've been doing a lot of like smart contract upgrades are now no longer become like immediately active, but like at the end of the slot. This is just like some tiny things which users are never going to notice but which makes it for us as auditors like a lot simpler and the mental model will improve um, how, how we can look at contracts. And I think just that that's, that's going to improve the whole ecosystem without anybody really knowing about it. Um, yeah, and then there's security tooling. Like, I think that's a large part where Solana is like lagging behind Ethereum right now. Um, we don't really have a lot of good, free, just like available to use for everyone security tooling. Um, if you're like a smart contract dev, I mean, yes, of course, you use Anchor and then you do some checks, but like, did you do all the checks? Like, writing integration tests in Solana is kind of painful right now. And then you have like upgrades, you have like Bosch incompatibility issues. Um, so that's, that's something I think where we really just need to have a discussion like, what tools do we need? And then we need to build them and we need to make them available for everyone. Like, I think that's like really critical because like once we do like kind of like these siloed security implementations of like individual auditors, I don't think this can be really like an ecosystem win. I want like these open tools that everyone contribute to and everyone can use. Um, for that, we'll be releasing RiverGuard later this evening at like five, uh, 15 o'clock. I'll be having a talk here introducing that. I think there's some really exciting tooling that like tries to go in that direction and provide something to everyone for free. Um, I hope you all be there and listen to the talk. Um, yeah, so if you have any ideas about security tooling, just like start this discussion. I think for me, that's like the most important point of this breakpoint, talking about these security tools. How can we improve Anchor? How can we like develop some scanners? Yeah, and there'll be amazing talks ahead. Like, if you just look at, look at the schedule today, all the talks that are here, most of the people are really excellent speakers, um, and the topics are really interesting. So please um, have a discussion about security, come to our talks, and I'm excited to be here. I hope you are too. Thank you.